Similarly, in this one too, Allah Subhana mentions, "Kalla ida dukkatil ardu dakkan dakka." When this earth is leveled, and the mountains become like dust, and this earth is transformed into a plain, a plain. Wajji ayawma idim bi jahannam. Kalla ida dukkatil ardu dakkan dakka Wajja arabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa And when this is happening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Wajja arabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He Himself will come down with the army of the malaika And He will take account He will take account of His slaves you know, in general life, when we're driving, whatever, whatever the case is, whenever we see law enforcement, you know that fear that, indi that the individual have in their system. Now, this is just this dunya, and we're dealing with people. What about the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself says, he will come down. Can you imagine that day? The fear that is instilled in people that day. Wal malaku saffan saffa And the malaika, they are coming down rank upon rank They explain that the first heaven opens And the malaika, who are big, strong They come down and they circle the entire humankind And they are more than the humankind and jinn can put together After they are finished, then the second heaven opens and the malaika of the second heaven, they also descend. And they're even more powerful and more stronger than the first group of malaika that came from the first level. And now they're even more bigger than the first level of the malaika and all the mankind and jinn can put together. Can you imagine that day? That day there is no refuge. That day there is no refuge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take account. Wajiyya yawma idhim bi jahannam And while this is happening Jahannam will be brought And Jahannam, the description is this 
that Jahannam has 70,000 ropes attached to it. And on each rope, you have 70,000 angels, 70,000 malaika, and they are dragging, they are pulling Jahannam towards the people. And this day, Jahannam is upset. This day, Jahannam wants to take revenge. Revenge for what? They want to check, Jahannam wants to take revenge for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as they are pulling and dragging Jahannam, and Jahannam sees the sight and sees the people on the plane, Jahannam is ready to go. Jahannam takes a hop to go towards the people. That day, Jahannam doesn't care whether you're a prophet or not a prophet, whether you're a believer or not a believer. Men, women, it doesn't matter that day. Jahannam wants to take revenge for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the zulm that was done. Allah, uh, that day, Jahannam wants to take revenge. And as Jahannam does this, the malaika has to restrain Jahannam. They have to restrain it. That's why they have the ropes. 70,000 malaika on 70,000 ropes that day. They have to restrain it. And they explain that when this happens, the entire mankind falls flat on their face. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the scene that day? What our condition is like on that day? That day, men will remember. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what will this remembrance benefit him? That this individual, if this individual spend their life in this world, not doing the righteous deeds, not doing the righteous acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and has not Follow the prophet example, the example of the prophet Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then this day, what is that remembrance? Where is the benefit if this individual spend all their time in this world not doing the things that they're supposed to do? And some people mention that whenever you have a father or even teachers, they say that, oh my son, oh kid, you're wasting too much time. You should be doing this and this. People don't waste time. Time wastes them because time is moving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another place, nahari, wa nahara fil layl. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who merges the day into the night and the night into the day. Who amongst us here, or who is who is analytical, or who is that has a, a, a philosopher, or whatever there is, whatever title they have, who can go out there now and remove the sunlight and make it nighttime? Nobody. So if an individual does not engage in this life, with their time, into the righteous acts, into the righteous things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, and the right example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this individual has wasted their time. This individual, time has wasted them, and this dunya has wasted them, and then they hear after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no use for them. And an individual will say, I wish that I could have done more good deeds so that it will benefit me in the hereafter. And they explain that if an individual is born, from the time this individual is born, if this individual is in sajda throughout his life, then in the day of judgment, this individual still has to face accountability. Because with this deed, this deed alone, this individual is not eligible to go into Jannah unless he has, unless he has the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that on this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a punishment, severe punishment, that none has ever given before. Such a day. And he will say that on this day, there is no bind that has ever been given except the bind of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine the circumstance? Can you imagine the scene, my dear brothers? We have, to, we have to think about this over and over, that us, 
we will be among those individuals who are there, who are present at that moment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the malaika descend and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts taking accountability for everything that we've done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, He says, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutuma'inna irji ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutuma'inna O real soul, soul, come out, irji, come Irji ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya Come towards your Lord, well pleased with your Lord and your Lord well pleased with you. This word here, nafsun, ya yatuan nafsun mutuma inna, three nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another place, He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, la ukusimu bi yawmil qiyama, wa la ukusimu bin nafsil lawama, another nafs. And in another place in Surah Yusuf, Allah also mentions nafsul ammara, the three nafs. Nafsul Mutuma'inna, Nafsul Allahwama, and Nafsul Ammara. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, O oh, real soul, soul, come out, come to your Lord, well pleased with Him, and your Lord well pleased with you. That if you spend this time in this earth and you do righteous deeds, you follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you because you've done what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and you've done the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put forth and you followed it so that day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well pleased with you and you yourself you'll be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Hadith we have where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers the individuals who, 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 will, who will be in, in Jannah He promised them such and such and such. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break his promise. Never. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward his slaves. So us too, we are satisfied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue, continues, فَذْفُلِي fi ibadi, وَذْفُلِي jannati. And he mentions, O oh my slave, <coughs> you are among my honored slaves. So for today, my slave, come and enter my Jannah. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Come and enter my Jannah. This is what we're looking for. This is what we should yearn for every day in our life. This is the ultimate success. This success, this calling that Allah puts forth. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadhkuli fi ibadi wa dhkuli jannati. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who, who receive this call and be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us Jannah with His mercy. And as you know, with time, in the time that we're in right now, there are those individuals who are celebrating some, some sort of memorial where they're remembering others. But us as Muslims, we also have to do this. But for us, it's not once a year. For us, it's every day. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, remember me and I will remember you. So while we remember others and, and act with other things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like, we have to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the righteous example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a higher place in Jannah. La hawla wa la illa billahi wa